What's up everyone? This is Diana Rose. Welcome to my channel. This is a recap and commentary for Love and Marriage Huntsville Season 1 Episode 4. This is my first time giving you guys a review of Season 1 on YouTube. You can check out my last three videos. The links are pinned in the comment section. And be sure to hit that like, subscribe, and your notification bell because that's how others find me. Follow me on IG, TikTok, and Facebook because I post over there too. Welcome to all of my new subscribers and thank every single one of you guys for watching my videos and rocking with me. So let's get started. So the scene opens with Kimmy and Maurice playing basketball with their sons. Jalen is a sophomore in college, but he is home for the summer. And Monster, who I believe is 11 or 12, he travels from Detroit to Huntsville every summer to spend the break with his father. Maurice congratulates Jalen on his summer job and Kimmy said that's great because he needs to take over some of these bills like his cell phone and car insurance. She also reminds Jalen that he has a curfew and he says to her, why do I have a curfew? And she said, because you're not going to be coming in here at all hours of the night. Then she told him that if he doesn't want a curfew, he's going to have to put something on the mortgage too. And Jalen said, mm, that's all right. In confessional, Marie said that Kimmy has a more regimented style of parenting and he's a little more flexible. But if you only parent for 60 days out of the year, then you would be a little more relaxed. Also, from what they've both shared, Maurice pushes a lot of the parenting responsibility of Monster on her too. So there's that. Then Maurice tells his son to call his mother Kiowa and let her know that he's doing okay. When they talk, she asks, what do you have planned for the summer? And he said, I don't know. Uh, Kiowa said, put your daddy on the phone. When Maurice picks up, she asks the same exact question. And Maurice said, oh, we're going to put him in space camp. Actually, I have a few camps lined up. And she said, oh, okay, that's good. Now, Kimmy's watching Maurice and listening to the whole conversation, and I'm sure she is in complete disbelief with how prepared and put together Maurice appears when he's on the phone with Kiowa. Kimmy said that she's been pleading with Maurice to enroll Monster in some sort of camp before he even arrived there for the summer, but Maurice seemed uninterested or too busy. Whatever the case, uh, he didn't do it, but he was able to regurgitate everything she had said to him to his ex like it was already a done deal. And when he hung up the phone, Kimmy called him out. She said, I've been asking you for weeks to enroll him in camp. And then you talked to Kiowa like it was your idea. Marie said, that's not true. It was actually Tisha who made the recommendation. Now that's a slap in the face. And then he said, but I can get it done. Kimmy said, there's no way you can get it done now. You're required to enroll weeks before camp actually starts. And this was our introduction to Maurice and Kimmy's relationship problems. She said that he closes her out or won't take advice with things that deal with his son, but he expect her to be there for any last minute save the day type of thing. So next scene. So the comeback group meet for dinner, and this is the first time all six were in attendance since the day they met on the lots. And also guys, this is the same exact restaurant where they all had that come to Jesus meeting. And they told Tisha that her mother causes most of the problems where things go too far. And Wanda was giving her shake a bone and get the hell on papers. But in this meeting, Marie said that everyone is here to finalize the operating agreement. Now, I believe it was Kimmy who said that she had personally drafted the agreement. And Maurice asked everyone if they had an opportunity to look at it. Everyone says yes. And Martel said, Melody read it to me. In confessional, Maurice asked Kimmy if he thought the Holtz read it. And she said, hell no. And that was in all caps. Kimmy's response to Maurice's question suggests that there's something in the agreement that she knows Melody and Martel will have a problem with. However, she's just going to let it slide. In fact, Scott 1 and 2.0 let it slide because they all made the deal together. But you guys, it really doesn't even matter because it will all come out in the wash soon enough. But Melody ends up questioning a section in the agreement that said members aren't allowed to participate or have similar dealings with projects that the comeback group is working on or once contemplated. Martel said, this is what we do for a living. So I feel like we'll always be in direct conflict with something that the comeback group has going on. Kimmy says, well, I don't think we would ever stop you from doing your business. And Melody was like, great. 
That should be written out here. And Melody said, well, how would we resolve it? Do we bring it to you for a vote? And they all said yes. And Martel looked at Melody like, no, that's too much power for them to have. I don't want to disclose my business plans. Then Melody said, a little loyalty will go a long way. Now, Mel is definitely trying to show him she wants to be a team player. We're going to get this done. And this would have been the perfect time for Kimmy to say, hey, Marisa and Marceau's businesses aren't listed in the agreement. So Tisha and I will be using our own LLCs. Will that be okay with y'all? But that's too much like right. So they actually end up rehashing what it would cost to build the homes. Now they were supposed to get two bids, but I guess it didn't come in. Martel said, look, this is what I do. I'm an expert at this. You guys don't even have to worry about it. It's over your heads. This offends Marceau, and in confessional, he said Martel thinks he's the only builder at the table. I've been in this for 20 years. Marceau said, I know a guy who can build the same exact home piece for piece for $69 a square foot. Martel is asking for 90 and he doesn't want to budge, and he doesn't want to use Marceau's builder. Then Marceau says, you're trying to make a $20,000 profit. And Martel looks at him and said, what? You make $20,000 in three or four days. It takes me three to four months to make $20,000 on the same house. Then Marceau said, well, that $20,000 comes from us. So you're going to have to go lower. And Kimmy has this self-satisfied look on her face. She loved that Marceau was taking Martel to task. She loved it. Martel ends up saying, listen, I'm not going any lower than $85. That's it. And Marceau said, no, we're not doing it. Melody ends up asking Martel, listen, do you want to be in the comeback group? And Martel had to think about it for a few seconds. And then he says, yes. And then Melody said, we'll do it for 80. Is 80 good? And Maurice quickly answers, yes, we will take it for 80. Also, when they were trying to fine tune the price, uh, Martel and Tisha have this back and forth where Tisha calls him spoiled and essentially selfish. And she warned him not to engage the group the way he engages his wife. Then Martel called her sweetheart. He said it twice, once by accident, the second time on purpose. Marceau puffs up on Martel, gives him a don't do it again look. And that's how that scene ends. In the next scene, the Scott brothers set up a golf date with Martel. They actually arrive first. And Marceau said he's a little bothered. Martel didn't do anything for his 10 year wedding anniversary. So he's going to take the reins and have his assistant put something together. And by assistant, he means Tisha. Then Martel arrives with Melody in tow and the Scott brothers are shocked. Marie says this is against bro code. Martel said that he wants Melody to do more with him so that she would start trusting him again. And Melody jokes that she likes hanging out with all the guys better than the girls because it's less bickering. They also rehash Martel calling Tisha sweetheart to squash the beef and that's how that scene ends. So Kimmy and Maurice meet with their marital counselor. Uh, their wedding is two weeks away and the counselor asks Kimmy how she feels about everything, in particular Monster, because in their last meeting, they spoke about the possibility that he would be with them full time. Kimmy said that she loves Maurice's relationship with his son, but her fear is that a lot of the parenting will fall on her because Maurice is at school and work. She ended up reflecting on her own life as a single mom, and she said the majority of her life was spent taking care of someone else and putting her own wants and needs to the side. She said that sacrifice was her choice, but now her son is grown and for the most part out the house, and she wants to do the things that she missed out on. She said she's in her 40s, and she has this young boo thing who should be helping her enjoy life, but all of his days and nights are consumed by school and he wants to be a parent full time. Then she said that she can't help but to ask, why now? And she started to cry. Now y'all remember Jalen said that he never saw his mama cry before this show. But baby, when I tell you, Maurice was shocked as hell too because he leaned all the way forward and looked her dead in the face. Like, are you really crying? And even though she was, she still found a way to make him feel okay about it. Next scene. So the girls meet up at the lingerie store. 
Tisha and Kimmy arrive first. Kimmy's actually looking for something fun for her wedding night. Uh, but while she's waiting on Mel to come, she's schooling Tisha on all the fun toys and remote control items. Tisha ends up buying these remote control balls because Kimmy highly recommended them. When Melody got there, Kimmy said, yo, do you use toys? And Melody said, no, I don't know anything about them. Kimmy said, I brought the wrong group of girls to help me out. Kimmy ended up modeling a few things and you could tell by the way she was strutting that she is confident about her body. In confessional, Melody said, for Kimmy to be almost 50, she got it together. And then she said that she hopes she looks that good when she starts aging. Then Melody bought the lingerie as a gift for Kimmy because she missed her bridal shower. Melody ended up leaving, but Tisha and Kimmy stuck around to buy Mel a gift for her anniversary surprise party. In the next scene, Maurice has a one-on-one -on -one with his son. Uh, he just wants to fill him out and make sure that he feels good about everything. The wedding, Kimmy, Jalen, and moving to Huntsville for good. Monster said that he's good and excited about everything. And Marie said that he's looking forward to preparing a son for manhood. And that's how it ends. Next up is Tisha and Marceau. Tisha is super excited to show Marceau what she bought at the lingerie store, especially the vibrating balls. But Marceau said, Tisha, I'm not using that. She also showed him the gift she bought Melody. And he said, why are you buying that for her? You should be buying it for you. Tisha said that we've been married for 12 years and you have never bought me lingerie. Marceau said that the gift Tisha bought was too spicy and that she needed to replace it with a keychain. And that's how the scene ends. Then Melody and Martel are getting themselves ready for the Scots. Mel asked, where did you go last night? You were gone for a couple of hours. Martel said to the gym. Melody let him know that the trip to the gym didn't add up. And then he started calculating for her. Well, it took me 45 minutes to get there and then another 45 to do cardio. In confessional, Melody said he's still up to his old tricks. And in Martel's confessional, he said Melody needs to fall back. Melody helps him with his tie. And Martel said, can you believe we've been married for 10 years? And Mel said, I can. Martel said the last 10 years has been amazing for him, the ups and the downs. Melody said she could do without the downs. And Martel said, but you learn from the downs. She said, did you learn from yours? Martel said, I'm still learning. And Melody said, wrong answer. In the last scene, Scott 1 and 2.0 get themselves dialed up, grab their limo so they can go pick up the holts. On the drive, Marceau cracks jokes about Martel's infidelity. And in confessional, Marie says, well, the rumor turned out to be true. Now Melody and Martel gets into the car. Everybody says hello. They compliment each other. And Mel asks, you guys, what is this trip about? Then Marceau said, well, one of our good friends have recently been married for 10 years. And everybody cracks up laughing, including Melody and Martel. Tisha says, we're going to a restaurant called 360. Have y'all been there before? And before she can get the last word out, Martel said, no, we never been. Melody was like, nope, never been there. In confessional, Mel said, we went to that restaurant last year. Then Tisha gave Mel and Martel their gifts in the limo and she re-gifted the remote control balls that she bought for herself and gave them to Martel. That was definitely shade. Now they're at the restaurant and Mel asked Tisha if she's connected with anyone from the networking event. Tisha said that she did reach out to one person who she thought she had a lot in common with and later she'll even invite her to lunch, but not before she scrubs her walls and do a deep clean of her house. Melody said, you got to do all that to have a lunch? Tisha said, yeah, I do. Mel said, Tisha, don't let too much time go by before you reconnect, okay? In confessional, Martel said, what did she say? Mel said something about scrubbing floors and they both double over laughing. Maybe production was trying to show the difference in priorities between a businesswoman and a housewife. Then Martel started picking with Marceau by asking Tisha what things are going to look like for her when she starts working outside of the house. Marceau said, I think you're asking me that question. Martel said, no, I'm asking Tisha. Tisha told Martel what she thought life would look like, and she also told him that right now, she feels like a single mom. 
Those words seemed to shock everybody, but Marceau was furious. Marceau told Tisha, if a real single mom was here, she'd cuss you out right now. Then Kimmy chimed in and said, well, I am a single mom and I'm not too cool with it. Then Tisha talks about longevity and marriage. Then she said in the early years of her marriage, her and Marceau almost didn't make it, but they stayed together for the kids. But she never gave the reason for why they almost didn't make it. In fact, to this very day, no one knows. But she did have the nerve to say, now that I've talked to you guys about what we overcame, could Mel and Martel tell us how they overcame infidelity? Now Martel is over it. He's like, what the f okay? I am tired of you. But Melody just rolls with it. She's like, listen, you gotta rebuild the trust and that's an ongoing process. And she's running the whole list down, okay? And the Scots are looking back and forth between Melody and Martell. And they're smiling because one person is just giving freely and the other is burning up inside. In confessional, Martell said, I'm tired of Melody sharing our business with the Scots. But now we know that the Scots knew Martell's business long before even Melody knew Martell's business up close and personal too, because as they put it, they hung out with Martell and this girl a few times. Anyway, now when you see those faces smirking and smiling at the table, you know the exact reason why. But you guys, let me know what y'all think in the comments. Like the video, subscribe to my channel, hit your notification bell, and I will see you all on the next one.